Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Once again, welcome to Timber Creek Church. Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm the lead pastor here at Timber Creek. And whether you are joining us in person or you're with us online today, thank you guys for connecting with us. Um, we've mentioned this a couple of times, but next week we are kicking off a brand new series. We're going to go through the book of Galatians together. Now listen, whether or not you have, let, let's say this, let's say it this way. If you have never studied through a book of the Bible, I'm excited to get to do that with you. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to get deep. We're going to experience what the, Lord, what the Word of God wants to speak to us. Um, I would say this. I wrote this down earlier this week as I was kind of prepping for that series coming up. Um, Galatians, the book of Galatians is kind of like a kingpin in the New Testament. There is so many essential truths that are just packed in there, essential truths to our faith that are found in that book. Um, you're not going to want to miss that series. It's going to be awesome for us. We're going to kick it off next week, but I'm super stoked that you're with us today because today, today, my friends, we are wrapping up our short series on the Spirit, the Spirit of God. Now, here's what we've done over the last couple of weeks. We have been working around this kind of a foundational premise, and it's that um, God desires something for all of us, no matter what your background is. No matter whether you were raised in church or not, uh, wherever you're sitting right now in circumstances in life, God has something for all of us, something that he desires for each one of us. And that is that we would be able to experience the richest, fullest spiritual life possible. And he made that possible to you and to me through the salvation of his son and the power of his spirit. I'm going to say that one more time. This has just been foundational for us. There's a life that God has for you, and he made it all possible through the salvation of his son and the power of his spirit. Now, this series has been focused on unpacking some of the mystery that surrounds the Holy Spirit, because let's be honest, there's a lot of people who have a lot of questions when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Is anybody brave enough to raise their hand? I mean, I do, right? I got a lot of questions still. Um, we wanted this series to be just incredibly foundational. And so in our first week, we looked at the Trinity. We talked about who the Holy Spirit was or is and how God the Father and the, Jesus the Son wanted the Spirit to be a huge part of your life. In our second week then, we kind of turned our attention and we talked about, we looked at how the Holy Spirit gives us power to live out the life that God has for us. If you missed either one of those two weeks, I really encourage you to go back. You can check it out on our website or our church center app. I really believe it's going to be tremendous help if you are wrestling at all with these questions about who the Holy Spirit is, what his role is in our life. Can we trust him? What, 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 is, this, what is the Spirit? What is that all about? So, the Holy Spirit is mentioned over 800 times in the Old Testament and the New Testament of the Scriptures. And the word, the original words that were used in those contexts, the Hebrew and the Greek, the words that were translated as spirit mean a strong wind or a blast of breath. And this is really important. It's not just the wind or the breath, but it's also the power that is contained in it. Now, I believe that this definition that we've been using for the last three weeks now, I believe this is really going to come alive today in our teaching, because today I want to look at what it is to be filled with the Spirit, filled with the Spirit. It's interesting vernacular, isn't it? Interesting vernacular. It originated with the Apostle Paul. So let me do this. I want to set it up this way. Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14 that he was going to go away. He's been doing ministry with them, living with them for three years now. And he tells them, I'm going to go away, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to ask the Father, and he's going to send the Spirit to you. Now, up until this point, the Holy Spirit came upon people, not in people. The Spirit came on people for a mighty act, for a certain situation, for a circumstance. The Spirit came on people. You read all about it uh, throughout Scripture. We talked about this last week. Um, the Spirit came on them, but it was only temporary. He didn't remain with them. And that was why it was so significant that Jesus said this in, in the book of John. He said, right now, the Holy Spirit is with you, but soon he's going to be in you and 
he's going to stay with you forever. So this is part of the significance. I just want to try to unpack this very quickly again. This is part of the significance of the work that Jesus did for you when he did this work of salvation. When Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he made us, he made you righteous in God's eyes. He justified you in the eyes of the Father so that the Spirit of God could come dwell inside of you because you're righteous. So the Spirit comes in us at that point and empowers us forever. So when somebody says, when somebody makes a decision to allow Jesus to take the lead in their life, to become their Lord, because of what Jesus did for us, the Spirit of God comes to live inside of that person. And so the Apostle Paul, who wrote a ton of letters about the Holy Spirit, he wrote to a group of believers in a city called Ephesus, and here's what he said. He said, when you believed in Christ, when you made that decision, you placed your trust in him, God placed his Holy Spirit inside of you. When you said yes to Jesus, when you decided to follow him, when you made him your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came to dwell inside of you. But then Paul continued in the same letter, and it sets up our topic for today, okay? Sets up our topic for today. You're going to find this in Ephesians chapter 5, and it kind of seems a little bit weird, a little bit out of left field at first, because he starts out by saying this. He says, don't give yourself over to the control of wine. Don't give yourself, don't get intoxicated. It'll ruin your life. Now listen, he's not just He's not just like doing this flash teaching on drunkenness. He's actually providing an illustration. So follow this. He says, don't give yourself to the control of wine. Instead, give yourself to the control of the Spirit. Give yourself to the control of the Spirit. Here's what he said specifically. He said, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So there's something different. I just kind of want to lay this out in front of us here. There's something different between the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of you at salvation and what Paul calls being filled with the Holy Spirit. And understanding this is really, this, this difference here is really important for us. And of a lot of it actually comes down to the original word that Paul used here before it was translated into our English language today. So check this out. The word Paul used here for filled is the Greek word pleroma. This word is a fascinating word. It actually has multiple meanings we're going to look at today. But first of all, let's do this. Pleroma means permeated. It means permeated. Now listen, there's an illustration that I've used a couple times before that I think explains this best. The reason that I've used it a couple times is because it's so powerful, it's so memorable, it's so vivid. And my hope is this, my hope is truly this that you would learn this so much that if somebody asks you, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you could use this illustration, all right? So here we go. This glass of milk represents you. It represents me. This is the Holy Spirit. How many of you guys love the Holy Spirit? Right? Now, Here's what scripture says. Paul said this, when you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit mm, comes to live inside of you. Yeah, keep going. More Holy Spirit. More. We were singing about that today. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. All right. You guys are getting out of control now. All right. Here's the reality for us, though, okay? Oh, following me so far on this illustration. Here's the reality for us. Even after saying yes to Jesus, we often isolate the Holy Spirit in our lives. Only allowing him access to certain areas, certain times, calling on him when we need help, how many's guilty of this, right? But then compartmentalizing him when we don't. And that's because we all want to be saved, but we don't like surrender. We don't like surrender. There are certain parts of our lives that we would really, honestly, we'd like to keep on the side. We'd like to keep in our own control. But listen, Paul calls us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He calls us to pleroma. You watching me? This is pleroma. There's no part of this glass. That's a lot of chocolate. 
listen to me, there is no part of this glass now that doesn't have chocolate in it. It's, it's permeated. It's absolutely permeated. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to allow him to permeate every part of, your, of who you are, every part of what you do. So when you become a follower of Jesus, the Spirit lives inside of you. But Paul says, now, let him infuse every part of your life. Stir him up. Let him infuse your words, your thoughts, your actions, your motives. And I just want to tell you this. This is when his power really starts to change us. This is when the power of the Spirit really begins to produce life in us. And so here's what Paul wrote, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He said this, as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, as he stirred up, we become more and more like him. And I will just say this, there are many of you who have said yes to following Jesus. And you have the Spirit of God living inside of you. But it's time that you stirred him up. Listen, it's time that you stirred him up in your life and you allow him, the Holy Spirit, to permeate every part of who you are, your thoughts, your actions, your heart, your motives, be filled with the Holy Spirit, Paul said. That's good stuff, isn't it? Come on, how many of you guys want to drink this now? It's up here for after church, right? All right, here's the second thing. Here's the second thing. That's the first part of pleroma, how it's explained, this word that Paul used. Pleroma also means fullness. So in Greece, check this out, in Greece, pleroma was actually a nautical term, and they used this term to describe what happens when a sail on a boat is filled with wind. So when a sail is filled with wind, that wind grabs the boat and propels it forward. When you open your sails, when you open your sails and you allow the wind to take you where it wants, that's pleroma. You've got to open your sails and allow that wind to empower you, to direct you. And this is, again, part of what Paul is describing when he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is where our definition really comes to life, right? The Spirit is a strong wind. It's a blast of breath. So when we are filled, when we're pleromed by the Holy Spirit, God's breath, His wind, fills our sails. It, it gives our life power. It, it gives us direction. It propels us forward. This is the incredible relationship that Paul is teaching to his church, to, to his, the followers of Jesus, of saying this is why you need the Holy Spirit in your life, but, but you've got to stir him up. You've got to open your sails. You've got to allow him to fill you. You've got to allow him to direct your path. You've got to allow him to give you power and to strengthen you. And so again, I, I would say that some of you here today, you may feel the love of God in your life, but you don't necessarily feel his power. You don't feel his direction. And I want to encourage you to stir up the Holy Spirit inside of you. Allow him to permeate every part of who you are, allow his spirit to, to move you forward, allow his spirit to, to direct your path. Paul said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Is this connecting with you today? All right. There's one more thing about this word that we need to make sure we understand before we move on here this morning. Pleroma is not just a one-time event. All right. The word is present imperative in Greek. That's just a fancy way of saying it's a recurring action. It continues. In fact, you could say it this way. Each day we need to be pleromed. Each day we need to be stirred up. Each day we need to be filled. In fact, some of your translations actually use this, this translation. They'll say, keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Or be filled continually. I like that translation. Be filled continually. Continually stir him up in your life. Because you know this. This is our human condition. If we don't, if we don't continually stir him up, it's just too easy for us to default back to our old ways. Last week, we talked about our ways being like a shovel, trying on our own effort to dig things up, but the power of the Holy Spirit's like a skid steer tractor, right? If we're not careful, we end up parking the tractor and picking up the shovel again and we just go back to our old ways paul wrote about it to another group of believers here's what he said how can you be so foolish don't you love how just timid he is right how can you be so foolish 
You began living your new life by the power of the Spirit. Are you now trying to finish by your own power? So there is this ongoing, continuous action of being filled with the Holy Spirit, stirring Him up in your life on a regular basis, allowing Him to permeate every part of who you are, allowing Him to fill your sails and, le- and bring you forward. Now, as you read through the New Testament Scriptures, you see that Paul actually spends an extraordinary amount of time talking, uh, uh, writing to believers about a Spirit-filled life. This, this, again, vernacular that originated with Paul here. We're actually going to get into that as we kick off our study on the book of Galatians next week. Paul spends some time in the book of Galatians talking about what it is to live your life led by the Spirit, a Spirit-filled life. But if you've wrestled with this vernacular before, a Spirit-filled life, what does it mean? I want to tell you that this, these illustrations that we've used today, these thoughts about pleroma, continually being permeated, being filled by the Holy Spirit. For those of you who maybe have struggled with this concept, this is a great visual when scripture talks about a spirit-filled life. This is what Paul is talking about when he says, live the spirit-filled life. Allow the Holy Spirit to permeate every part of who you are. In fact, let me put it, let me put it into words for you. You may want to s- just snap a picture of this. It's a lot. A spirit-filled life is when you allow the Holy Spirit to permeate your thoughts, your attitudes, your speech, your actions. It's when you allow him to give you power and guide you where he wants you to go. This is what Paul was referring to when he talks about a spirit-filled life. We're going to come back to this in in the coming weeks as we land in Galatians here. So speaking of Galatians, in this letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians, here's what he said, Galatians chapter 5, 25. He says, "So, so if the Holy Spirit is living within us, let us be led by him in all things. Stir him up. Stir him up. Let him permeate every part of your life. Let us be led by him in our words, in our thoughts, in our actions, in everything. You hear about pleroma, this idea of pleroma here throughout the entire New Testament here. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, as we get ready to wrap up here today, this is going pretty quick, so I hope that you're, you're like clicking along with me here. There's two things that Scripture talks about happening in your life as a result of being filled with the spirit so when you stir him up there's two things that scripture talks about happening in your life as a result of being filled with the holy spirit and they are this the fruit of the spirit which is what the holy spirit produces in us what he does inside of us through the spirit's power god can produce great things in you and trust me you want these things right love Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Gentleness is in there as well. He empowers you to live this life that God has for you. When you stir up the Holy Spirit inside of you, he begins to produce these good things inside of you. We did an entire series on the fruit of the Spirit um, just this last year. We're going to touch on it again. It's, guess where it's found? Galatians right? That's where it's found. We're going to touch on it again in in a few weeks here. So the first thing that is a result of being filled with the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. The second thing is the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are what the Holy Spirit does through us. Now listen, there are few things in Christianity that cause more questions than the gifts of the Spirit. Am I right? Okay. This is when people are like, it's weird. It's weird. Um, I, let me say this and we'll move on, right? The gifts aren't weird. People are weird. It's just, it's just truth, right? Uh, some of you have, have met me and you're like, Patrick's weird. I probably am, right, in a lot of areas. But the gifts aren't weird, but they are supernatural. And that's where the, the hard thing is for us. It's like, this isn't natural. You're right. You're talking about the Spirit of God, right? You're talking about the Spirit of God. I would say it's not natural for Patrick to be patient, It's a fruit that the Spirit produces in me. It's supernatural, right? So you would look at me and you'd be like, how could he be patient? Only because of the Holy Spirit, 
That's it, right? So we wrestle with these things here. There's, there's uh, the Holy Spirit that empowers us to make a difference in the life of others. And we plan to tackle this topic in the coming uh, year as well. And, and I'll say this, though. There's some churches that turn up the volume on the gifts, and they turn down the volume on the fruit. And as long as you can do things, do things, do things, it doesn't matter if there's patience or goodness or kindness or any fruit of the Spirit in your life. There's some churches that turn up the volume on the fruit and they turn down the volume on the gifts. And I just want to tell you this, Scripture actually elevates both in our life. Actually elevates both of them in our life because when God wants to fulfill His purpose in the world today, He does so through the Spirit. Jesus paid the price and now it's the Spirit's turn to come in and do the work that God wants to do in, in the world today. So when the Holy Spirit, I just I want to make sure that this just settles like a ton of bricks on you today. Not in a, that's not a good analogy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stick to your notes, Patrick. Stick to your notes. This just needs to click in your brain, all right? This needs to click in your brain. When the Holy Spirit permeates every part of who you are, he begins to produce good things in you and good things through you, okay? So as we close today, I want to talk to two different groups of people. Uh, as we open today, I said that God desires something for all of us. He desires for us to live the richest, fullest life possible. He made that possible through the salvation of his son, Jesus, and through the power of his Holy Spirit. And so we've spent the last few weeks talking about the Holy Spirit and how he gives us power to live out this life that God has for us. But as we wrap up today, I want to circle back to Jesus because everything is anchored in him. Our church is anchored in him. Everything is anchored back to him and what he has done for you and for me. So it was his sacrifice on the cross that even made it possible for mankind to have a relationship with the Father. When someone is born again, when they have a new start, a new life, when they ask Jesus to take the lead in their life and he becomes their Lord, their sins are removed, their relationship with God the Father is restored, and the Spirit of God comes to live inside of that person. All from making a decision to follow Jesus. Can I say that again? Because this is so huge in our world today. When someone is born again, when they begin a new life with Jesus at the center of who they are, their sins are removed. All the mistakes of the past washed clean. Their relationship with God the Father in heaven is restored. A relationship that mankind broke because of our sin. It's restored. And the Spirit of God comes to dwell inside that person. All from making a decision to follow Jesus. So if you're listening today, and you know, nobody has to tell you, you know that you have actually never made that decision in your life personally. I want to give you an opportunity to do that today. And so I'm going to ask you if you would just bow your heads, close your eyes. This is just a, a private moment between you and God right now for nobody else. If you're ready to say yes to following Jesus with your life, I just want to ask you to raise your hand to the Lord right now. This isn't for anybody else. You're just ready to say yes to following Jesus with your life. Okay, those of you who raise your hands, you can put your hands down. Now, I just want to encourage you to to pray this prayer, you can say something like this. It's, it's not magic words. This is more about what's happening in your heart right now than the words that you're repeating. But you can say, God, thank you for your incredible love. Thank you for loving me enough to send your own son to make a way for me to have a relationship with you again. And Jesus, thank you for giving your life so that I could have true life. I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for all my mistakes of the past, all my sins. Give me a brand new start with you 
at the center of my life. Be my Lord and fill me with your spirit so that I can have the strength to follow you from this day forward. My life is yours.